driven in large part by the company's compliance plan for the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's Mercury and Air Toxic Standards, or MATS, rule. The company began to address the potential implications of the MATS <coughs> rule, along with a slate of additional proposed EPA regulations dealing with air, water, and coal combustion residuals in the 2010 IRP and in the 2011 IRP update. Over the course of the last three years, the company has exhaustively analyzed its coal and oil fire generating resources in an iterative process to determine the most cost-effective fleet-wide compliance options for customers. Due in part to the innovative solutions identified by the company, the compliance plan presented in the company's filing is significantly less costly than had been originally forecast. However, the MATS rule still remains one of the most impactful regulations issued by the EPA. The volume and complexity of analyses undertaken in this IRP was unprecedented in that the company was required to make compliance decisions on 9,300 megawatts of generation and then evaluate the economics of those decisions to determine whether it was more cost effective to control, convert, or retire the unit. The scope of this review complicated the company's analysis because it was necessary to account for the impact that a decision to retain a particular unit would have on the analysis of subsequent units. Commission Public Interest Advocacy staff has thoroughly reviewed the company's MATS compliance strategy, performing its own analysis from the ground up, utilizing its preferred assumptions and modeling methodologies in certain instances. Staff nevertheless reached nearly identical conclusions as the company. This result offers validation that, while there may be some difference in opinion in terms of methodology and preferred assumptions, the company's analysis was fundamental, fundamentally sound. The only conclusion where staff and the company differed is that while the company's analysis clearly demonstrates the addition of natural gas at plant Gaston would be beneficial for customers in all future scenarios analyzed, staff's analysis showed marginally different results that favored retirement of Gaston. However, staff's analysis reflected only a small difference in the economic results between retirement and the addition of natural gas as the primary fuel. In light of the economic results for the addition of natural gas as the primary fuel at Plant Gaston, staff's witnesses concluded that it would be reasonable for the Commission to approve such a change in order to maintain this capacity as protection against any unforeseen contingencies. Likewise, we continue to believe that the addition of natural gas as the primary fuel at Plant Gaston is reasonable and by our analysis, clearly economic, as such a decision would retain the significant benefits of a known and historically reliable generating unit. Our testimony responds to concerns raised by staff regarding the company's plans to reliably supply natural gas to the plants Gaston and Yates. We described the company's natural gas transportation procurement strategy for plants Gaston and Yates, and the reason why the company is confident that it will be able to obtain sufficient natural gas transportation to ensure that these units will be able to reliably serve customers. We also provide further evidence supporting our forecast of Powder River Basin or PRB coal prices and report on the successful test burn of PRB coal at Plant McIntosh. The company has also provided further explanation regarding the manner in which the company's transmission planning process is integrated with the IRP planning process. Our testimony also addresses the company's current reserve margin. All of the analysis performed by the company and staff concerning the company's MADS compliance decisions fully reflected the company's reserve margin. While the reserve margin is a key consideration in planning, it is important to understand that at any given time, reserves may be higher or lower than the company's target. Evaluating the value of existing resources requires a long-term perspective that takes into consideration the short-term level of reserves but does not disregard the long-term benefits of existing resources to customers. The company's analysis does just that. In light of the current level of reserves, the company continues to actively pursue opportunities to sell retail capacity length into the wholesale market, as such sales will provide economic benefits to our retail customers. Recently, Georgia Power and the other Southern retail operating companies successfully executed a multi-year power sales agreement the company will communicate the details of this wholesale agreement with the Commission in the near future. The company continues to pursue cost-effective renewable resources in collaboration with the Commission and remains open to future opportunities to add more renewable resources to the company's portfolio as, been, as has been demonstrated by numerous new groundbreaking programs and acquisitions since the 2011 IRP 
including most notably the large-scale solar program, the Georgia Advanced Solar Initiative, and the recent wind deal with EDP. Though some parties have questioned the manner in which the company incorporates renewable resources in the IRP, the company's actions demonstrate that it is committed to obtaining renewable resources in a responsible manner that ensures benefits to customers. The Commission should reject the solar-related proposals put forward by Southern Alliance for Clean Energy and Georgia Solar Utilities. SACE itself conceded that its proposal lacked necessary details and put immediate upward pressure on rates. Georgia Solar Utilities' testimony failed to provide the details and analysis that would be needed for the Commission to even begin to consider its proposal. Furthermore, Georgia Solar has not provided sufficient evidence to demonstrate that it is qualified to undertake the proposed project nor any reason why this project should be permitted to bypass the Commission's typical competitive RFP process. The company's proposed portfolio of DSM measures, which is set forth in docket number 36499, appropriately balances upward pressure on rates with economic efficiency while saving customers 317 gigawatt hours of energy annually in 2014 to 2016. The company is willing to consider the increase in program participation recommended by staff but continues to believe that the additional sum should be set based on gross energy savings, as was proposed by the company. The DSM recommendations put forward by SACE should not be adopted, and the company has identified significant flaws in the financial analysis supporting SACE's DSM recommendations. Additional DSM issues will be addressed by the testimony of Mr. Legg, filed in docket number 36499. The company's accounting requests in this proceeding are substantially similar to those made in the 2011 IRP update and ultimately approved by the Commission. Though the company is willing to discuss these issues further with staff, we continue to believe that the accounting requests are reasonable and minimize the impact on customer rates. In conclusion, we request that the Commission approve the company's 2013 IRP and the requests made by the company in its IRP filing including the MATS compliance plan presented in this proceeding in its entirety. The company's IRP and its MATS compliance plan in particular provide the means to ensure that customers continue to receive a cost-effective and reliable supply of electricity that will provide significant economic benefits for customers. Thank you.